Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, and I hope you are all having a completely amazing day. And today's video is going to be a little speed paint for you guys, as well as some advice for painting portraits and acrylics. And before I get into anything, I just want to say <laughs> that I feel like I'm getting sick. Like, I feel it inside of me, and it's starting, and I'm not looking forward to it. Um, but I'm gonna try to get through this voiceover without, like, coughing up a lung or, like, throwing up or anything. But, like, my throat, it can't do it. <laughs> like, my throat is, like, hating me right now, so it'll be fine. I'm gonna get through it. I wanna get a video up for you guys. Um, and I'm hoping this video can be helpful for some of you. If not, hopefully, like, a lot of you. I know a lot of you probably want to get into starting to paint portraits or just portraiture in general, and it can be super daunting. Like, let me tell you, it was super daunting for me when I first started out a few years ago, and I remember getting into art and being like, okay, I'm not going to do portraits. I refuse to do it. It looks horrible. I'm not going to like anything I make, and I'm just going to paint animals. So I did animals for like half a year, and then I finally worked up the courage to try portraiture, and it took me like a few years to get to where I am today. And I'm not saying my portraits are that good. I feel like I really like my style. And I'm getting better at it um, and I'm improving still but they're they're not really like they're not like immaculate renaissance works of art but I think I can probably help you guys out with some tips and give you guys advice if you guys have any questions oh and I've also only been painting with acrylic since maybe the beginning of 2015 wait no wait maybe no okay I started painting in acrylics I believe the very beginning of 2016 and then I started oils in 2017 and now I'm back to acrylics because oils are just too much like oh, heck no <laughs> but this piece is an acrylic self-portrait um, and I hope you guys like watching it come together it's kind of a Frida Kahlo um, Camila de Rico or happy the artist inspired surreal pop surreal portrait I kind of just put on some funky Bjork music and like Bjork brings out like the funky in me like I swear I was just painting and next thing you know my head was floating and I had these jellyfish coming out of my head like I don't know it's a whole thing um, <laughs> but I hope you guys like watching it come together. And again, it was a fully acrylic painting. And I did use some of these tips that I am going to tell you guys today to make this painting. So yeah, let's get right into it. Okay, so tip number one for you guys is about brushes and canvases. So basically, when I first started out doing a painting, I worked very, very small because I was scared to go big. And my advice for you guys is to not be afraid to paint large or to work with large brushes because, and again, I know this from experience, um, acrylic dries really, really fast, and if you didn't know that, uh, maybe you should rethink the medium. Like, if you want something that's going to take a very long time, I probably would recommend oils. But acrylics dry very, very fast, and as an acrylic artist, we kind of have to fight that, um, if we want to. Sometimes it's a great thing, sometimes it's a work, it's like a weird thing, and with portraits, it's usually a pretty weird thing. We have to kind of combat it, so I totally recommend um, exploring these different brush sizes, because the last thing you want to do is to use too small of a brush on too large of a workspace, because your paint will skin over and dry before you can use all of it, and painting large things with a small brush is going to be complete hell, and I was very scared to use large brushes because they're kind of intimidating, <laughs> but like, don't be. It's, I, it's gonna be fine, <laughs> and I totally recommend it, because again, it can speed up the process and allow you to work with larger areas and not waste so much paint, because you will be using the paint actively instead of just having it sit on the palette while you do these little details on this space. So accommodate your brush size to the canvas if that makes any sense. Okay, so tip number two revolves around price. And a good thing about acrylics is that it is much cheaper than oil paints. And that's usually the case for both student and artist grade quality materials. And honestly, you don't need artist quality materials to start painting. You can paint with dollar store stuff. Like I'm telling you guys, um, acrylics are very versatile. And usually if you get a student grade acrylic paint, you can still do some pretty cool stuff with it. And I actually used student grade acrylics like Liquitex Basics and brands like that for a couple years before I actually invested in nice high-end acrylics, which I recently just did, like, last year, like, December. So, like, I haven't been using artist-grade stuff that long, and I've done a lot of cool stuff with student-grade stuff, so don't, don't have to, don't think that you need the most expensive stuff to begin. However, I do recommend maybe investing in, like, an artist-grade quality, like, titanium white or zinc white, or both, like, honestly both, <laughs> and, like, a carbon black, because usually with those colors, um, they, I don't know, I feel like just in my painting experience, 
if I have a really nice high-end white, it makes the rest of the paint work really, really well. Like, for example, if I had a student-quality red and an artist-quality white, um, when they're used together, they kind of, the artist-quality kind of helps the student-quality out, kind of. And, um, honestly, student-quality paints are also very transparent to begin with. Like, they're not as full of pigment and, um, like density or like opaqueness as an artist quality brand would be. Um, so honestly, student quality brands can be really helpful because if you are doing portraits, you want to be glazing a lot and that natural transparency can really help you because you won't have to work so hard and use different mediums to thin down your paint because it will already be pretty transparent to begin with. That does mean you have to layer a lot to get opaque like looking things, <laughs> but like it can help you. And like that artist quality, like magenta, hot pink, whatever color that is, I love it. <laughs> so like, I totally recommend trying out different student quality brands to figure out what works best for you instead of going right ahead and investing in the most expensive paint that you can find. Because um, especially if you're starting out, you want to have practice and you need to practice. So using cheaper brands will make it easier to practice more because you won't have to be buying so much paint for so much. Now, tip number three for you guys is to spray your palette and use just a spray bottle on like a light misting feature or like a light misting setting. Um, and spray your palette so that the paint stays um, wet longer and doesn't dry out so fast because the worst thing is when you put out too much paint on the palette accidentally and then it skins over and dries out before you can use it all because you've wasted the paint. So I totally recommend um, using a spray bottle to spritz your paint while you are working so that it stays wet for longer and you don't waste as much. Now tip number four is pretty important and it is to use mediums. And usually when you think of acrylics, you don't immediately think of mediums. Uh, mediums are morally associated with the oils, but you can get mediums for acrylics as well and they are so helpful. For example, you can use like a flow medium to increase the flow of your paint without breaking it down or a glazing medium to create beautiful glazes and washes of acrylic which I use the most because I really like glazing. <laughs> or you, like, you could even get like a retarder, which will slow down the drying time of your paint so it doesn't skin over and dry out and get wasted. So there are a bunch you can look into. I will put some down below that I really, really like, and you guys can check it out and maybe try them out because I recommend them and they are really, really helpful. Tip number five is very important too. <laughs> like all these tips are pretty important, but this advice is probably one of the more important ones and it is use a reference when painting portraits. And I can't stress this enough, but portraits, especially if you're trying to paint someone who's like real, <laughs> like you need to be able to capture their likeness. And the easiest way to do that is to use a reference and to not try to paint them from your head because that won't work. Like that won't work. If it works for you, like, I don't even know what to say to you, but like, it probably won't work. <laughs> so use a reference as much as you can. And also when you are sketching in, you can either use a grid and a photo to get accurate proportions, or you can even trace the image on if you have to. Um, the one thing I will say though, is that when you are sketching directly onto a canvas, do not use an oil-based product. I've done that before. And guys, it will do weird shit on your canvas. <laughs> like do not use like an oil pastel or an oil-based pencil to sketch in the image because it will not mix with the acrylics. Um, use like a watercolor pencil, or you can even use like kid's chalk. Like you can use anything as long as it's kind of water-based, you can use it. So um, yeah, use don't use oil stuff with acrylics. Like usually don't mix those two. It's usually, like bad and I agree don't do it. <laughs> now tip number seven kind of goes hand in hand with the last tip and it is to do an underpainting you guys and this is pretty helpful um, and I do it sometimes I don't do it all the time um, but when I really want to get accurate like values I do and I like to do black and white or monochromatic underpaintings before I actually go in with real like detailed colors <laughs> um, and that'll kind of help you establish the lights and the dark in the piece without stressing about getting accurate colors from the get-go um, and especially if you're starting out I totally recommend doing some monochromatic studies so taking an image putting it on the black and white setting and then trying to replicate it onto the canvas without stressing about again trying to get accurate colors because that's kind of half the battle and um, getting values will most likely be more helpful than trying to get the best colors and once you can do value studies and you can see the values in the different pictures and the different faces you can change the colors completely like for example I'm doing pink skin a lot and I do green skin and blue skin and that is mainly just because I know how to paint values and once you can master values you can kind of paint with any color you like like it doesn't really matter as long as again there are the correct lights and darks in the painting and especially if you are painting in the same genre as I am and you want to do these whimsical and enchanting fantasy portraits like purple skin sounds 
amazing. <laughs> so I totally recommend kind of getting used to values and then just exploring all different skin tones because you can have so much fun with it. And that's one of my favorite parts about doing portraits is just doing all these different rainbow and iridescent skin tones. And again, it's all just because I know how values kind of work. And I'm not a master at it, but I kind of have enough of a grasp on it where I can kind of take a value and transfer it to any color I would like. So I do an entire spectrum of skin tones and I encourage you all to explore it as well. However, my next tip is about mixing more natural skin tones, and when I was younger, I would take a peach or a pink or a brown and then just do a monochromatic face, and that is not how skin tones really work. <laughs> um, I totally recommend using, and this, is, this sounds really weird, like, hold on, using a red and a green to make a base skin color, and then using a different blacks, yellows, pinks, and whites to make it the right type of tone that you are looking for. Um, red and green together make kind of like an earthy kind of brown color um, when it's lightened or darkened it really makes beautiful skin tones and you can add more red to make more of a rosy complexion or more yellow to make more of a golden complexion and even more green to make it more olivey um, and you know it can also be used to mix different highlight colors and different shadow colors so you can mix blues in to make more shadows I like to do a lot of purple shadows especially on natural skin um, and you can do a different highlights as well by mixing in different like pinks and different yellows like you can make a lot of really really cool natural skin colors as well not just fantasy colors and you know some of the tips for natural skin colors can also apply into the fantasy pieces because you usually keep shadows very cool colored and then highlights and cheeks and noses very warm and flushed and I like to make my ears and my noses and right under the eyes very very pink and red um, while keeping the shadows very blue and again purple so you know explore skin tones I'm telling you guys it's like the best part and I just cannot recommend it enough like just go live your life and paint all the skin and just have fun with it because it's so fun I, i'm telling you guys i don't know if anyone else finds as much enjoyment out of it as i do but i think painting skin is so fun and you guys should totally go explore the whole freaking spectrum of colors now my last tip and i'm gonna try to wrap this video up because it is getting kind of long but it is to have patience and i cannot stress that enough well, acrylics are all about layering and you know of course they're fast drying but you know since they're fast drying we have to really work it and you have to combat the fast drying while also making blends and it takes a lot of time and a lot of practice so have patience when painting and you know keep practicing like you won't get better unless you practice and of course all artists say this but practicing is how you get better and it's how i got better and it's how a lot of people get better so practice have patience with your art and don't give yourself too much trouble about it like don't stress about the small stuff especially when it comes to the paintings like you're gonna improve if you keep doing it don't put it aside and quit art forever just because one face kind of looks messed up <laughs> so have fun with it and be patient and i really am excited for you guys and i hope you guys can paint portraits better now i don't know how helpful this was hopefully it helps some of you even if it helps one of you i'm happy um but i'm going to wrap this video up i hope you guys have a completely amazing rest of your day i love you all so freaking much um thank you for stopping by the channel and i hope you stick around um and i will see you all in my next video bye guys